That's right. He just presents it. Amen. He just puts it out in front of you. And and, and, and he doesn't force us to do it. You see, uh, we you know there's an old saying if you give the devil an inch, uh, or if you give the devil if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. Though we usually give him that too. Amen. Listen, get it down in your head tonight. You sin for one basic reason. You want to. That's why I sin, because I want to. Amen? Uh, and, and in order for me to start sinning, I have to stop loving God temporarily. Amen? You say, I don't believe that. Well, the Bible says you can't serve two masters. Amen? That's right. And, and every time you and I sin, we spit in God's face and everything that He's done for us, it means absolutely nothing to do is we're going to live for ourselves, we're going to live for our flesh, we're going to live for me, el numero uno, number one. Amen. And so the devil knows he's he's pretty slick. Amen. If you, if you ever think that you can win a battle with the devil, you're out of your mind. The Bible says that even Michael the archangel does not bring a railing accusation against him. Amen. And and uh, and then let's see here in verse number uh, verse number ten. It says that when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. You ever get afraid sometimes in a Christian life? Where you don't know what's going to happen next? Maybe you're going through a battle, a struggle, a trial, and you don't know why this is happening, and you don't understand what the purpose of it is. You don't know why the Lord would allow it. Can I ask you, don't so much worry about why. Ask yourself what. You say, what do you mean? What does the Lord want you to learn from this? It's always right to do right. Amen? It's always right to do right. And it does get scary at times. And the battle looks too hard. And, and, and you know what? Sometimes the enemy even looks too strong. Amen? But, but listen, the walls seem too high. And, and, and it just gets overwhelming. And, and you don't know what's going to happen. Can I tell you tonight that we have somebody that cares about us? Amen? The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen? We get to think and say, have you ever asked God this question? Lord, why did you, it seems like you forgot about me. Why have you forgotten about me? God hasn't forgotten about you. Amen? Amen? God has not forgotten about you. People say, well, I, you know, I just can't wait to get up to heaven and ask God why. Can I tell you that one glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase? Right. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to get up to heaven and I'm going to ask God why he put me through those problems. You're going to take one look at him and you ain't even going to remember you had a question for him. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't even going to cross your mind. And, and, uh, and look at verse number 11. Here's another thing. It says, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in a wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may, die, uh, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in this wilderness? They thought they were going to die. And you know what? Sometimes the devil will try to get us to think that God is against us, and that God has forgotten about us. And that God is just trying to hurt us. Can I tell you tonight that God never does anything to his children? He does things for his children. Amen? He does things for yep. his children. Yep. And God knows what he was he, he God knows what he's doing. And you know, as a preacher, as a pastor, as a missionary, as an evangelist, you think about it sometimes. We wonder, did God uh, forget about us? And, and we go through hard times in the ministry. And Lord, why are you doing this to me? And I don't understand why. And we wonder if God knew what he was doing when he called us. Can I tell you tonight, God always knows what he's doing. Amen. He ain't never made any mistakes out of that. Amen. It's us who stop performing. It's us who stop doing. And then look in verse number 12. Here's another one. It said, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians. The devil will get you to think that you were better off lost. You say, well, I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. You see, the devil will get you to think that when, now that you're saved, there's too many restrictions. There's too many rules. I get a kick out of hearing people say, well, if you go to that church, you can't do this or can't do that. Well, that had that. That's not even a valid argument. You can do anything you want to do. Sorry, Amen. Well, if you go to that church, uh, there was a rumor going around our town that we had the men, uh, we made the men sit on one side of the church and the ladies sit on the other side of the church. And we ain't never done that a day in our life. Amen. <laughs> but the devil will get you to concentrate uh, and think about how much fun you had before you were saved. Sorry, and, and the good times you had before you were saved. Hey, 
percent of your money to the to the church. You had more money. People say, I can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. Amen. Yeah. And, and listen, God always gets his tithe, by the way. Yeah. Amen. He will always get it. Amen. It might be a blown transmission or a broken uh, water heater or something like that. But God will always get his money. That was free. I didn't plan that. Amen. <laughs> That's just, that was just extra. Amen. No charge. Amen. But the devil will get you to thinking that you're better off lying. Yeah. And, and it says there, it said, uh, uh, there's another section of scripture. Uh, it said, what to God that we had died in the wilderness. Can I tell you that if I had died in the wilderness, I would have went straight to hell? Amen. Thank God that I didn't die in the wilderness. Amen. I'm glad that I got saved. I'm glad the power of God and the Holy Spirit of God convicted me of my sin. And I'm glad I didn't die in the wilderness. Amen. When you stop to think how close you are or how close you were to hell. Amen? Think about the day you got saved. What if that person that led you to Christ uh, didn't feel like serving God that day? Amen? We, we were closer to hell than we even realized we were. And then in verse number 12, it said that we should die in this wilderness. You know, the devil gets you to think that there's no hope. That there's no hope. And then, and then after all that, the Lord comes down to Moses and he says, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. You know what the problem was? They were come to the Red Sea and they thought there was no way out. But God seen an escape that they didn't see. Yes. And God made a way for them to go forward. And I want to give you four reasons tonight, real quick, on why we need to go forward. Why on earth should Mackenzie Corner Baptist Church go forward? Well, number one is obvious. God commands it. Amen. God commands it. He said, tell the children of Israel that they go forward. God wants you and I to be advancing. Hey, listen, can I say this? You ought to be more spiritual today than you were a year ago. You ought to be closer to God today than you were six months ago. Yep. You ought, to be, you ought to be enjoying that relationship with the Lord more today than you have uh, in, at any point in your Christian life. I, I'm telling you, I was uh, talking with Brother Karen the other day, and, and uh, we're talking about this idea of prayer and, and things like that. And, and uh, this has been uh, the best year of my Christian life. And I'm not just talking about an evangelism on the road. It's been the busiest year. But, the, but I'm saying personally for me. I, I think it's the most, uh, I honestly, I can stand here tonight and tell you this, that I believe that I'm closer to God tonight than I ever have been in 28 years of being saved. Amen. And I don't say that bragging because I'm a mess. I know my shortcomings. You say, what, well, Brother Craig, what made the difference? God had to do something in my heart, and I had to spend some time with Him. And when you spend time with God and walk with God, He'll show you what you really are. And he'll show you the areas you need to improve. And he'll show you the junk you need to get out of your life. And the more that you spend time with God, the less you want to offend him. Amen? Amen. And God wants you to be going forward. God wants you to be more spiritual. God wants you to be closer to him than, than you ever have before. And, and why is God commanded? Go to Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter number 7.